In this video, we will be discussing how to create a recovery server as well as performing a failover. Creating a recovery server, there are prerequisites. A protection plan must be applied to the original machine that you want to protect. This plan must back up the entire machine or only disks required for booting up and providing the necessary services to a cloud storage. And one of the connectivity types to the cloud site must be set. So to create a recovery server, click on all devices and select the machine that you want to protect. You'll go over to disaster recovery, and then you would click on create recovery server. You will then select the number of virtual cores that you want and the size of the RAM. Be aware, however, that the compute points next to every option here the number of compute points reflects the cost of running the recovery server per hour. You could specify the cloud network, which will be connected to, as well as specifying the IP address that the server will have in the production network. By default, the IP address of the original machine is set. I do want to let you know that if you use the DHCP server, you would want to add this IP address to the server exclusion list in order to avoid IP address conflicts. Next, you can select the test IP address box, and then you can specify the IP address. By doing so, this will give you the capability to test the failover in an isolated test network and to also connect to the recovery server via RDP or SSH during a test failover. In a test failover mode, the VPN gateway will replace the test IP address with the production IP address by using the NAT protocol. If you leave this box cleared, the console will be the only way to access the server during any test failovers. Again, if you use a DHCP server, add this IP address to the server exclusion list in order to avoid IP address conflicts. You can select one of the proposed IP addresses or type a different one. Next, you can select public IP address. By having a public IP address, this makes the recovery server available from the internet during a failover or a test failover. If you leave this checkbox cleared, the server will be available only in your production network. The public IP address will be shown after you complete the configuration. The following ports are open for inbound connections to public IP addresses. On the TCP side, you have ports 80, 443, 8088, and 8443. On UDP, you have 1194. If you need other ports to be open, you will need to contact our support team. You can also select the RPO threshold here. This will help define the maximum time interval allowed between the last suitable recovery point for failover and the current time. If you go by hours, this could be within one to 24 hours. If you decide on minutes, the values can be set between 15 to 60 minutes. And if you go by days, this could be set between one to 14 days. If the backups for the selected machine are encrypted, you can specify a password that would be automatically used when creating a virtual machine for the recovery server from the encrypted backup. You can click on specify and then define the credential name and password. By default, you will see the most recent backup in the list. If we had different backups here, you would have been able to view all the backups and you would be selecting show all backups. Finally, you can also change the recovery server name here, and you can also type in a description here, and then you can hit create. The recovery server then would appear in the disaster recovery servers tab in the console. You can also view its settings by selecting the original machine and clicking disaster recovery. The recovery server appears in the disaster recover servers tab of the service console. As you can see, we created it here. Now let's go over to performing a failover. So in performing a failover, though testing a failure is optional, it's recommended that you make a regular process with a frequency that you find adequate in terms of cost and safety. Good practice is creating a runbook, which we did in another video, which again was a set of instructions that describes how to spin up the production environment on the cloud. 
Testing a failover means starting a recovery server in a test VLAN that is isolated from your production network. You can test several recovery servers at a time in order to check their interaction. In the test network, servers communicate using the production IP address, but they cannot initiate TCP or UDP connections to the machines in your local network. If you wanted to test a failover, we can go to Disaster Recovery, Servers, and then select this recovery server. And over here, we can hit Failover. Select the type that you would like, in this case, Test Failure. We could select a recovery point, and then we could click Test Failover. When performing a failover, Failover is a process of moving a workload from your premise to the cloud and also the state when the workload remains in the cloud. When you initiate a failover, the recovery server starts in the production network. All protection plans get revoked from the original machine. A new protection plan is automatically created and applied to the recovery server. At least one recovery point must be created before failing over to a recovery server. So to perform a failover, you need to ensure that the original machine is not available on the network. And in the console, you can go to Disaster Recovery, Servers, your recovery servers, and select the recovery server. You can click on Failover. And then in this case, it would be clicking the production failover. And then you would start the production failover. When the recovery server starts, the state will change to finalization and after some time to failover. It's important to understand that the server is available in both states despite the spinning progress indicator. You want to ensure that the recovery server is started by viewing its console. You want to ensure that the recovery server is started by viewing the console. Since here we were doing a test earlier, we can then go to the console, but it would be the same premise as if we were not doing testing, but an actual performing a failover. You want to ensure that the recovery server can be accessed using the production IP address that you specified when you created the recovery server. Once the recovery server is finalized, a new protection plan is automatically created and applied. This protection plan is based on the protection plan that was used for creating the recovery server with certain limitations. In this plan, you can only change the schedule and retention rules. If you wanted to cancel a failover, you would select the recovery server and then click cancel failover. All changes started from the failover movement except the recovery server backups will be lost. The recovery server will return to the standby state. If you are using DNS servers on the local site for resolving machine names, then after the failover of the recovery servers corresponding to the machines relying on the DNS, it will fail to communicate because the DNS servers used in the cloud are different. By default, the DNS servers of the cloud site are used for the newly created cloud servers. If you need to apply custom DNS settings, you'll need to contact our support team. So performing a failover on a DHCP server, your local infrastructure may have the DHCP server located on a Windows or Linux host. When such a host is failed over to the cloud site, the DHCP server duplication issue occurs because the VPN gateway in the cloud also performs the DHCP role. In order to resolve this issue, you'll need to do one of the following. If only the DHCP host was failed over to the cloud, while the REST local servers are still on the local site, then you must log in to the DHCP host in the cloud and turn off the DHCP server on it. Thus, there won't be any conflicts and only the VPN gateway will work as the DHCP server. The other way is if your cloud servers already got the IP addresses from the DHCP host, then you must log in to the DHCP host in the cloud and turn off the DHCP server on it. You must also log in to the cloud servers and renew the DHCP lease and assign new IP addresses allocated from the correct DHCP server hosted on the VPN gateway.